It began as a dream for William Hood Dunwoody. That became his legacy. For 100 years, Dunwoody College of Technology has changed people's lives, met the needs of Minnesota industry and business, and built the infrastructure that makes the Twin Cities the thriving place it is today. Since the school first opened its doors in 1914, Dunwoody has stayed true to its founder's vision, which was to provide for all time a place where youth without distinction on account of race, color, or religious prejudice may learn the useful trades and crafts and thereby fit themselves for the better performance of life's duties. This was a radical idea for the time. Upholding this mission over the years has required the efforts of many people, faculty, staff, alumni, and friends of the college. The end result of their hard work can be measured by the fact that Dunwoody graduates stand above the rest, and their personal and professional accomplishments define what is known as the Dunwoody difference. They are the legacy of this unique institution that all began as a dream. William Hood Dunwoody and his wife Kate made an impact on the local Minneapolis community not long after their arrival from Philadelphia in 1869. William had already established himself in the milling industry out east and did so once again, eventually becoming one of the partners of the Washburn Crosby Company, which later evolved into General Mills. William was also active in banking to fund his many business investments and entrepreneurial ventures. For example, after being the first major depositor at Northwestern National Bank, which later became Wells Fargo, he went on to become its director and president. Kate Dunwoody made a lasting impact on the Minneapolis community, particularly through her charitable work. Both William and Kate's philanthropic efforts helped in the creation of Abbott Hospital, which later merged and became Abbott Northwestern Hospital, and the contribution of a substantial gift that helped establish the Minneapolis Institute of Arts. The Dunwoody's most generous gift, however, occurred in 1914. This was for the creation of the William Hood Dunwoody Industrial Institute. Together, their estate left more than $3 million to the Institute, which equals about $150 million in today's dollars. William and Kate had set the foundation for Dunwoody, and now it was up to others to fulfill that legacy. In 1915, Dr. Charles Prosser became the first official director of the William Hood Dunwoody Industrial Institute. Under his leadership, Dunwoody became a national leader in vocational technical education. In 1917, Dunwoody moved from its original location at Central High School to the location where it still stands today. In keeping with the school's mission to provide hands-on training in all aspects of the workplace environment, a time clock was installed to encourage students to learn the importance of punctuality. When the U.S. entered World War I, Dunwoody responded by training men and women to fulfill the needs created by the war effort. In total, more than 8,683 men were trained at Dunwoody for military and technical positions. Women were trained as ambulance drivers. The 1920s brought a period of economic growth and prosperity for America and for Dunwoody Industrial Institute. The core programs and departments were established, including the American Baking Institute, under Dr. Prosser's leadership, Dunwoody was creating a new class of worker that would stand above the rest. How? By providing a different kind of education, an applied education. The core features of applied education were training should be hands-on and offered in settings that replicate actual work environments. Instructors should be pulled from industry and be masters of skills they would teach and would model a strong work ethic and sense of integrity. And finally, the type of training offered students should be determined in collaboration with industry. These educational principles, which comprise the foundation of the Dunwoody difference, increased graduates' earning power and made them valuable to employers. The business community quickly grew to see Dunwoody as a valuable partner. After the stock market crash in 1929, this partnership also helped secure Dunwoody's future. Faced with budget shortfalls during this economic crisis, Dunwoody began to ask business partners and suppliers to donate and lend equipment for the training of students who could become their future employees, a practice that continues to this day. During the Great Depression, the Dunwoody difference helped secure the futures of its graduates, even when unemployment and underemployment in the United States reached close to 50 percent. 
The demand for Dunwoody graduates by employers often exceeded the supply. In 1941, the U.S. officially entered World War II, and once again in response to our nation's needs, Dunwoody added new courses to train men and women to fulfill the positions created by the war effort. This time, training women for bench work and machine tool operation in the defense industry. World War II lifted the nation out of the Great Depression, and after the war, America began to experience an unprecedented economic boom. So did Dunwoody. The 1944 Servicemen's Readjustment Act brought thousands of veterans to campus, all of whom were eager to receive the training they would need to enter the civilian workforce. During this same time period, with the help of major grants from the Ford Foundation and the U.S. Agency for International Development, Dunwoody expanded to establish technical schools and programs overseas. As a result, Dunwoody became an international model of vocational education in more than 30 countries over the next 30 years. In 1972, in keeping with the times and directly in response to the request of a dedicated female automotive student, Dunwoody's Board of Trustees changed its males-only policy and opened up enrollment in the day school to women. The 1970s and 80s also brought about the computer revolution, and with it, major changes to the industries Dunwoody served. In 1980, computer labs were opened throughout the school, and personal computers began to be a critical tool for most courses of study, especially with the advent of computer-aided design. Continuing to adapt to changes in higher education, Dunwoody received regional accreditation from the Higher Learning Commission in 1998. In 2002, to acknowledge this change, Dunwoody Institute changed its name to Dunwoody College of Technology. In 2006, the college launched its first four-year bachelor's degree program in applied management. This was subsequently followed by the launch of bachelor's degree programs in interior design, industrial engineering technology, construction management, computer systems analysis, and most recently, architecture. Today, Dunwoody College of Technology continues to respond to the needs of business and industry and the needs of its students by offering more than 40 certificates, associate degrees, and bachelor's degrees in seven academic departments. For 100 years, Dunwoody has stayed true to the vision of its founder by providing a rigorous, quality, hands-on education in a variety of programs that respond to industry demand for skilled workers. Upholding this mission over the years has required the efforts of many people, faculty, staff, alumni, and friends of the college. The end result of their hard work can be measured by the success and positive impact Dunwoody has had on its alumni, their families, and the communities they work and live in. Dunwoody graduates stand above the rest, and their hands-on training, strong work ethic, and sense of integrity define what is known as the Dunwoody difference. They have become the best in their field, the best technicians, the most capable managers, the innovative leaders and entrepreneurs. They have launched, grown and led numerous companies. From small firms and shops to multinational corporations, they have shaped the industries they serve, the way we live, travel and work. The very skyline of the Twin Cities. Dunwoody graduates know how to get things done. They design things. They fix things. They make things work. They are William and Kate's legacy, and the legacy continues.